Welcome to another edition of Knife Chats with Tobias. If you like what you're seeing, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider leaving a comment. And if you really like it, how about sharing it with your friends and subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you. So today I'm here to answer that age-old question, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Actually, the reason I'm here today is to talk about this thing. It's a machete that I found in a pawn shop. Uh, I would like to say that I went into the pawn shop, I saw it, I knew exactly what it was, and uh, I got it for a great deal because the pawn shop broker had no idea what it was. But that's not the case. In actuality, probably neither one of us knew what it was, except that it was a big old badass looking machete. Um, I ended up buying her for like 15 to 20 dollars I believe somewhere around there he was actually trying to sell me a couple of those flaming dragon uh, type machetes uh, that you see on like cutlery corner networks one of those frost products uh, for like 40 or 50 dollars but I had nothing to do with those and I actually told him uh, you might find a dad who wants to buy one of those for a 16 year old son but this is what I'm looking for something like this this looks uh, mean and practical and I can really use it and this thing is solid. I mean, about three sixteenths of an inch thick in, at, at the spine. Um, nice, heavy wood handles. Three rivets holding the handle in place. Uh, the blade is about 14 and a half inches long. The handle is six inches long, so about 20 and a half inches overall in length. And I had no idea what it was when I picked it up, and I really didn't care. Um, there's absolutely no markings on it whatsoever anywhere. Um, and I just assumed it was a really well-made machete, had no idea where it came from or anything else, and uh, I was really happy with it. And then uh, about a week ago, I posted a picture of the machete and its sheath, which is a really nice heavy leather sheath. Let me uh, show you the sheath a little bit. If you notice, it's got these three holes in there. There were brass rivets in there at one time. I didn't take them out. Apparently, they fall out all the time. But it's a nice, heavy, brown leather sheath. Uh, good quality leather, too. And uh, the machete just goes in there. Notice it's got a belt loop on the back. And then it's got one of those uh, little knobs that uh, the sheath actually closes over. sheath is ripped a little bit. But you see, that's the way it goes in there. And in uh, any case, when I posted the picture online on uh, about this, uh, about a half an hour later, somebody online posted, that is the uh, French Senegal Colonial Cuckoo Machete, or something like that. In any case, I found out the actual name of it is the Sabre de Habitas. I just butchered that in French also, I know that. But it's commonly known as the Coupe Coupe. Um, and uh, it was issued to uh, French colonial forces uh, and initially uh, in 1917 to uh, Senegalese uh, uh, French colonial forces fighting in the trenches in World War I. And then it continued into the service uh, again with French colonial forces in the World War II and continued in service with French colonial forces all the way up and through the 1950s. So this thing had a long record of service um, with the French military. And they are not marked, but this is what they look like, and this is what the sheath looks like. And the guy saw it, and uh, he had no doubt in his mind. He said, no, that's what it is. And he also said it's probably one of the earlier ones based on the pattern of the sheath, which is pretty cool. Now, just because it was one of the earlier ones doesn't mean that uh, it was used in World War I or World War II. It just means it was an early pattern sheath and this was around, so it could have been in stock anywhere. Um, where or how it ended up in a pawn shop in northwest Indiana is beyond me, but I'm guessing that it probably came back to the United States as a war souvenir. Um, so, and then ended up in the pawn shop because somebody sold it to the pawn shop. Um, my best bet, it's in, uh, it's, if you can see the edge here, there are some issues with it. 
Uh, there's some nicks in the blade and such. Some of those nicks I might have put in myself. And there's a grind mark here. But other than that, it's in really good shape. The handle is tight as can be and in really good shape too. And my bet is this probably dates from uh, the 1940s or 50s. And it might have came back to the United States either at the end of World War II or during the Vietnam War. Uh, because these were used by French colonial troops not only in Africa but also in Indochina. And so my bet is this might have been used in the um, French Indochina War in 1954, um, you know, and, um, and still hanging around in Vietnam after that, and then maybe picked up at a shop in Vietnam by an American soldier and brought back to the United States. That would be my first guess is that that's how I got here, but I have no idea really how I got here, and I really don't know the age of it. All I know is it's still really a, just a badass machete, but now that uh, it's also a military machete, that just makes it that much cooler to me. Uh, so one more uh, big honking blade in my military knife collection. In this case, a French uh, saber de abatas or cuckoo machete, as in C-O-U-P, C-O-U-P. Um, I'll put all the spelling up in here also so you'll see it. But uh, yeah, and with this, a woodchuck could chuck as much wood as a woodchuck could chuck. There's no doubt about it. Man, you could cut through things like crazy with this thing, even if you're a woodchuck. So just a quick wrap up. My uh, pawn shop machete turned into the uh, saber de abatas, or the coop coop machete, which uh, was actually used by the uh, Senegalese colonial forces of the French army starting in 1917, and then were used uh, by any other colonial forces and, that were in the jungles and such, so throughout Africa and also Southeast Asia, including Indochina, all the way up until the 1950s. Um, it was a feared weapon in the hands of the uh, colonial forces because, I mean, it's a really a big butcher knife and can do a lot of damage. Um, the overall length of it, is 20 and a half inches or uh, 53 centimeters. Uh, the blade length is 14 and a half inches or 36.8 centimeters. And the blade thickness is 3 sixteenths of an inch or 4.4 millimeters. Now, uh, I had a chance to look a little closer at mine and it does have a marking near the handle, um, but it is so faded that I cannot make it out. So um, I cannot tell who the maker of it was, but it did have some kind of tang stamp on it at one time. Um, and that's really all I can tell you about it, is that it was a uh, machete used by French colonial forces. And so once again, thank you for joining me uh, here at Knife Chats. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode, and I hope you learned a little bit about the uh, Saber de Apatis, because I know I sure did. And um, if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.